Hi, I'm Angie Monco. I am an energy healer and self-love coach for women going through divorce and loss. And today I want to talk about, are you mourning your youth? I once heard someone say this. They said that aging takes a lot of courage. And it's true. The way that I see it, we have three milestones to aging. And the first one is that we're going to watch a lot of people that we love die. And number two is that we'll notice physical changes in our face and in our body. And number three is that it's harder to maintain our health as we age. So those are the three things I want to talk about. And I'll start out with the topic of divorce. Um, if you're like me, you probably notice that you're seeing more and more people die left and right all over the place. And so this is an important topic of grief. It's not popular, but it is important that we talk about it and be able to move through it. So the first topic is watching people that we love die. So the other day, my husband and I were talking and he made some kind of offhand comment. He said, everything goes away eventually, Angie. You know, you need to strengthen your emotional muscle to accept that. And he's right, but it's certainly a trigger. When I was six years old, I lost my aunt Elaine and she was 10 years older than me. We were both born, we were both born on September 23rd, the same day. And so I felt very close to her. And I just remember when I was staying all night at my cousin's and the next day we were playing restaurant and my mom called and said Elaine had died. She had a tumor, fast growing tumor, and in two weeks she was gone after we found out about it. And so it left this imprint of uh, the other shoe dropping. And I literally thought for 10 years that I was gonna die when I turned 16 years old, just like she died. I remember the funeral vividly with my aunt Elaine and just how, you know, one day I was playing with her, having a great time, and the next day she was in this coffin. And I got to watch all my caregivers suffer and, and mourn over her as well, which had an impact. You know, we pick up on that stuff. Um, my uncle Ray wrote a poem about her and I remember I'd read that often and I'd cry frequently for her. And I never remembered anyone sitting down with me and talking to me about death and what it was. And that would have been immensely helpful, okay, even though I was only six years old because it created this belief that I can't relax and have fun. I can't live fully alive in the present moment because I'm going to be blindsided. And then when I lost my daughter Maddie when she was 22 years old, another blindside. So anyway, I don't know if you can relate, but I hope you can. The second painful milestone of mourning our youth is losing our looks as we age. Uh, I believe as women, we really tie our self-worth up with our looks and our appearance. Um, I know I'm more than a physical body, but my ego certainly doesn't like the physical changes that accompany aging. And I know that I have a very a harsh part of me, a stickler part, a perfectionist part that is very, gives me very stinging judgments of, um, of how my face is changing or, or my body and, um, very superficial. So I admit to having this vanity defect and I come by it very honestly. My grandma, my mom, I mean, my dad's mom, um, was very beautiful. She was the prom queen in high school. And I just remember her always cutting her body down so harshly and saying, Oh, Angie, it's hell to get old. My grandma, Rady, would also say things like, um, she would talk about how she was so fat. She said, oh my God, I look like I'm pregnant. You know, and I remember when I was 11, she took me to a diet club called Slim Talk. Um, and when I was in a junior in high school, I was actually queen, prom queen and homecoming queen at my small little high school. And I think that that just further reinforced the need to be pretty um, to be loved. And then my grandma, my mom's mom, I remember one time she was making dinner and she said, have you gained weight? She was making these dumplings for Thanksgiving. And it just further reinforced that being thin and it has to equate to my self worth. And, you know, grandma always wore real short, short. She was also very petite. And so, you know, both of my grandmas really reinforced this vanity defect within me. Number three 
is we have to fight harder for our health as we age. Um, I'm a big proponent of the mind and the power of the mind and just not buying into the belief systems that as we age, it's got to be terrible. We're going to go downhill. Um, I remember when I was 38 years old, I was going to get LASIK surgery and the doctor tried to dissuade me. He said, because in two years, your eyes are going to shift. And I just remember thinking, no, I'm not going to buy into that. And so here it is 15 years later, I'm almost 53 tomorrow and my eyes are still 20-20 vision. So how we think has an extremely important impact on our health as we age. I do also believe though, coupled with, if we take care of ourselves, we have to be more proactive and diligent, vigilant as we age by taking care of our gut and how we eat and how we drink, how we move our bodies, that all plays into it. But the biggest thing is how we think as we age. So let's recap. Based on the three things we talked about, here are three steps for gracefully aging to my bias. Number one, let's honor death instead of resisting the idea of it. Death's a natural part of life, and I believe that there's a continuation of life, but in another realm after we die. It's a mystery, but maybe we don't need to be so afraid of it. Just like the honor, the Mexicans honor their dead on the day of the dead by, it's like a big reunion for the dead. Let's do that. Two, Let's see our worth from a place of gratitude of being alive rather for them from a place of assigning value from a place of vanity. Number three, let's create a new belief about what's possible for the body. What if we stop resisting all the things that we could be afraid of that will kill us and just believe I'm ready to receive a strong, healthy body and mind? Check out in the comments my upcoming class, If You're Grieving Someone You Love, Your Youth, or Your Health. It's three secrets for women to survive grief and divorce. Thank you.